Hello everyone, welcome to another day, another devlog of the game engine. And in the last video, I was talking about all those functions. You can see that I actually removed some here because I decided that I'm not going to support uh, mesh collisions, mesh collision detection for now. Um, but, and I said that in the next video, I will be having all of those functions implemented. And I actually have, but this is not the point of this video and you'll see why in a moment. If I go to the implementation, the collision.cpp, you can see that I have them all implemented. And it is actually 50 lines of code. Very simple. I try to be very uh, as fast as I could when it comes to writing a, an efficient code. So, of course, there is a lot of room for improvement. I even have like um, a test case here, something that I need to test if the performance will get any better or worse. So maybe in the future I'll do this. But anyways, um, I tried to add some comments in the, in the checks that are not very trivial, but it is simple here. 50 lines of code and I have all those checks implemented. Um, but now we have another problem and it is an interesting problem. How to test that? Because, um, okay, I wrote them and I believe they are true. I believe they work. But should I count on my expectations? Should I count on the fact that I believe they are true? Or should I actually go ahead and test them? And the actual answer is I should test everything. This is very important, especially for physics and math. And as you probably know at this point, we do have a math library. So we need to test that too. And now we need to test the physics. I'm not sure if we need or if we even can uh, properly test the system uh, or the graphics because this requires a lot of like visual stuff. Some stuff here takes time, like the audio. Anyways, uh, it's complicated, but physics and math, well, we need to test this. This is important to test. Um, and how to test this in a development? Should I, you know, play the game? and make a test case here, like make two objects and try to move it around to see if they collide or not. Well, yes, this is a good test, but let's say, and like for the most part, this is enough. If I have like two objects here and just check if they collide, I might actually as well do that after I record this video because we need to do the physics resolution and it's better to visualize what's going on. But what happens if you only test like that is if you keep developing the engine and the game and the project and everything, maybe in five months, uh, you decided to change something in the collision and then you did you do that, but you were probably not going to replicate the same test that you did five months er earlier. So what you risk having is a regression in your code, meaning a code that was working fine before, but then you change it something and now it does not work. And the problem with this is that there's a very high chance of you not knowing, not uh, realizing that you introduced a regression, meaning there's a chance that you change something, let's say um, the, the physics is working, and then I close here, and then five months later, I completely forgot about this, and then I decided to change something in, in the AABB. Maybe I changed how this constructor, this specific constructor works, or something like that. And then, all of a sudden, uh, this change broke the collision of the ABB and five months later I will not gonna realize this and uh, it will compile and it will work but then five weeks later on I will notice that there's something really wrong and it will take a lot of time for me to debug and figure this out and believe me this happens because it does happen to me um, in my game engine in cave it happens a lot and now I'm changing my approach to development in order to do some safe checks like some important carries or tests or stuff like that even like simple search like that for example i was having a problem where the minimum position was greater than the maximum position so i added this assert here now this type of stuff helps a lot but what really helps if is if I could do a massive battery of tests, all at once to make sure that most of the code is correct. Then this is why unit test is good in, in software development. Many people don't like them, but you gotta understand how they are useful and when they are useful. Because as I said before, um, I might not write tests for the audio or for the graphics. Maybe I should write some uh, tests to see if the get pixel and set pixel and append and thus uh, split image and, and so on works because they are more, they have more, more to do with data than it does 
it did have to do with the actual stuff in the GPU. So maybe I should write them. But in general, for math and physics, it's good to have unit testing. So what I did, I actually created here, let me minimize this um, and this as well. I actually created here another project in this solution. Let me go ahead and set the startup to this. Here you go. So I created another C++ project. This project does have a main. The main is huge, but I would go ahead and, and explain that in a moment. This is the main. And what I created here is a test lab class. This test lab is very simple. It's a, just a class that you can add functions with a name to identify these functions. And then there's a run and, it, and then if it of course stores these functions and there's a run method that will basically run every single function that we have here. And then if there's a catch, if I throw an exception inside this function here, uh, it will catch and it will say that the test failed. If there is no exception, the, the test passed. So how to the to write this test, well, I have a bunch of defines here, and this is fine for me, at least it's fine, um, that asserts if something is true. So if this condition is not true, it will throw this exception and it will say the line and the assertion failed and the condition. And the same for false, equal, near to say if a value is near another with an epsilon. This is useful for floating points because of discretization, that's a hard word. Anyways, so I wrote this test lab and if you are experienced with tests, you know that we do have Google tests, we do have other stuff, even like in, in Visual Studio itself, if I search for test here, um, there's a native unit test and Google test. So there's a lot of native solutions and better solution than writing your own poor man's test case lab, but I like doing myself and so I decided to do it myself here too. So I wrote this small library here and then in the main file of the engine tests I can simply create a test lab and then I add a bunch of stuff. And of course I've encapsulated that into functions because as you can see this, this code is already huge and it will tend to grow because this includes all the individual unit testing. So let me go ahead and expand the simple one like the vector2. So I'm passing the test lab here. And then what I'm doing in this function is, hey, I get this test and I add the test called math vector2 to identify them. Constructors, to, stat, to test the constructors. And then I have a lambda function here that tests, hey, vector1. This is a default constructor. So it should fill the x and y axis of the vector to zero. And then I'm, I'm checking this, x and y should be zero, fine. Vector two, I have a different constructor and I'm checking if all the num values are one. And then a vector three, another, and then you get it. And if this assertion throws an exception, meaning that it does not work, um, this test case, this test lab, will uh, consider that and it will show you, hey, there's something wrong here, you should fix that. And I do have a lot of testing. So you can see assignment operation, comparison, arithmetic operation for the math. You can see the list is endless. I have this for vector two, vector three, math, math you choose and transform. So I have all that covered. This is all covered by the test. And I also have all the collisions, which is the point of this video, right? So if I keep going down and down, I will eventually reach the collision detection test. And I will write more detection tests here, but for now, I have AABB versus AABB. So I have a bunch of cases. Uh, some are true and some are false. I might add more, but that's fine for now. AABB versus transform. So I'm always checking against very basic stuff to see if they are true or false. I should actually um, ask also check the ABB constructors. Oh, by the way, I'm, I changed the ABB to be a struct because everything is public and I removed the other um, collide functions that we added previously because it's fine having them here. Okay, so I should add unit tests for this. I will probably do that later on after I record this video. But what is important now is that I do have a bunch of tests to make sure that the collision works and they handle most of the cases, ABB versus ABB, versus transform versus sphere. Then we have transform versus transform, transform versus sphere and sphere versus sphere. So we can see that if all those tests passes, there's a very high chance that the um, entire thing works. So let me run this. And as you can see, it runs very fast and it said, 
hey, all the 34 tests passed. So the result is success, right? And then I have all that as passing. All the, the cases here are working just fine. So the good thing about this is that in six months, in six months, if I forgot about this code and then change something and I want to make sure that everything is still working, I can run this unit test again and it will say, hey, this works. But let's say that I broke something. Let me broke something here on purpose. Let's say that the, uh, the one of the constructors of the transform is not working and it is setting wrongly the, the position to be back to uh, 3.7 for some whatever reason so we can see that this transform is now not working and again this is just a dumb um, explanation but what would happen is probably like inside the transform constructor you accidentally change something here so it does no longer initializes everything correctly so now if i run this test you can see fail unit testing because in one test failed and I can go here you can see test 25 fail math transform constructors and then I have the line of the error 483 and go ahead and open the 483 this is the line and then I even have the assertion failed vector 2 equals to transform position um, this is not being satisfied satisfied right so this is fail failure and then I can go back here and say, well, what is going on here? So let me add a breakpoint and run this again. Let me do this. And then if I run, I will reach this breakpoint. And then I can see, hey, the position, oh, it is not correct. It is not what we expect it to be. So then I can go ahead and fix it. So this is the idea behind the unit testing. And this is why I believe it's good. Um, and again, it helps you to write code safely in the future and make sure it works. Oh, it, I actually stop development so now i fixed and everything is working again so this is why i like unit testing and it helps me to you know have a better overall code quality and speaking about that let, let's write a live unit test here because i have a corner case that i don't think we have handled here in the transform which is something like that let's say you have uh, a transform like that and this is the center of the world so this transform I'll call this T1. T1 is basically, um, I'm not going to write this, but it's, it is basically a vector, uh, a transform, with the position equals to 0, 0, scale equals to 1, 1, and rotation equals to 0. So it is in the center of the world. And let's say that I do have another transform. I'll call this T2, like that. Okay, so it is probably at position two i believe i'm um, not sure is maybe two and a half and then the rotation is 45 degrees but they don't collide and i need to make sure that this is not colliding because what this test will do and in order to write you need tests you cannot blindly write tests you need to understand what is going on behind the scenes uh, what this transform versus transform uh function is doing is it it is first making this object um untransforming this transform to this t1 space and then it is calculating the aabb of this t2 and it is checking against so we can see that this collides this aabb collides so the first case is correct but the second case is the other way around in other words you transform you untransform t1 into t2 space then you get t1's aabb relative to t2 and then you check the if they uh, collide you can see they don't so this should return false um, and this is how we, this function works so you need to understand how the function works in order to write unit testing um, you can see here that this is exactly what we are getting what i'm doing here so it's important to write the unit testing let, let me actually open blender just to make sure that the numbers are correct and also, I believe 45 degrees needs to be radians. I always forgot, like, I'm the one that actually wrote this and I forgot. Anyway, so this is the test case that I want. And location is 2. Let's write this live. So this is the transform. Oh, no, I believe I have that. Uh, this is the constructors. Let me go back all the way down to transform versus transform. Good. So I will create another transform here. Transform. Trans Let me actually call this T1. And again, as I said, T2, we have position 2, scale will be 1, and the rotation will be 45. I don't think this is in degrees, and actually, this is a good point. I probably need a Floyd to Euler 
I probably need this, okay? I need. I probably need to implement those functions. I do that later on. It's just a simple multiplication, but you got a point. Um, so let's go back to the test and focus here. I'm pretty sure, man. Let me just double check this. Make sure that the get matrix. Yes, this needs to be radians. So 45 degrees, one word. And I like doing this. B is 180 degrees. So if I divide that by four, I should get 45 degrees, roughly. Here we go. So this is 45 degrees. Oh, I also should have a math futures for pi, right? Math like const flow pi, stuff like that. Because then I should be able to just do math.pi divided by four. Anyways, but, and this is also something that I need to init that. Let's focus here because this is the point of the, this part of the video. I'm assert false because collide T1 and T2 is not, um, should not collide. Okay? So this test case that I wrote is literally this literally this let's see if i'm lucky or not today if this will pass or not it passed you can see here the collision detection transform versus transform they pass that means that this works now let's stretch this a little bit and do this maybe location is 2.3 okay um let's put 0 0.5 we will work yes okay 2.3 and 0 0.5 let's do this again folks the two dot position equals to back to two dot three zero dot five. Yeah. Now this assertion should be true. Let's see. Yep, it works. So this is the point. This is why we should do unit testing. Uh, it is very important to have all that working um, just fine. So that's it. Now I can keep going. I can write some other code. I can write an efficient code maybe that um, uses multi-threading to check a bunch of collisions against. But actually, I mean, for now, what I believe I will do next is I will keep writing some more unit testing here and then I will go ahead and write the basic collision resolution. As I said, I don't want to do advanced collision resolution, but I want to do, let's actually make a list here. So there's two dynamic objects, possible dynamic objects. One is transform, one is the transform, and the other is sphere. So the transform, I need to resolve the collision between the ABD, the trans another transform, and the sphere. And the sphere, I also need to resolve the collision between ABB, transform, and sphere. So I will have two, um, six different functions here, probably called resolve collision or stuff like that. Like void resolve collision between, again, a transform, T1, and then another transform, an ABB, and a sphere. Actually, do this. Oh, this should not be const though, because this is what I, I will actually modify, right? Then I said that I should resolve the collision between the, the sphere, right? What is wrong here? What is going on? Incomplete. Oh, it is important to be a vector too, right? So this is the collision resolution. Collision resolution. And then I'm probably going to have the collision detection. Okay. All right. So this is probably the next step. Um, I might do ABB versus ABB, but I'm not sure because, no, well, anyways. Uh, but it is this, folks, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, a possible change that I can make this is instead of applying this directly, I can simply uh, return a vector 2 here for all those resolve collisions that say, hey, in order to resolve this collision, you need to move this transform or this sphere by this amount. This will probably gonna be a better solution here, but we will see. I will implement all that later on. So that's it. That's what I have for you in this video, folks. If you have any questions or comments, leave below and I will be able to answer them. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next video.